politics has been going for the last few years is heavily creating a lot of anxiety for the young um, about f the future and an uncertain future. We have Brexit coming up, which is, you know, two years away, it's now certain. And that is something that there was a huge divide between young and old on um, and will affect us for generations. And there are a lot of um, negative and kind of quite um, worrisome projections about what that could mean for our future. There has been a retreat, like a complete cutback in austerity of mental health services. And one of the key things about um, mental illness is that all studies show that it pretty much solidifies in youth, in childhood, and actually most of it before you're 14. And so we're seeing kind of now the effects for the last seven years of a generation of children um, who've grown up perhaps under austerity with cuts to services, cutting back of the welfare state that's affect their parents' lives, affects their lives. The way that um, our politics at a kind of macro level has been going is now starting to play out in youth culture, in youth identities, in youth politics. The idea of mental illness is very nebulous um, politically at the moment. It's not, it's used in a variety of different ways. Um, and I don't think there's been a full grasp yet on the reality that that this, you know, mental illness shapes different people and has different outcomes. And it's really quite heavy stuff, life or death for some people. And for the fact as well, we don't really discuss the fact that mental illness arises out of poverty, it arises out of stress and um, a lack of benefits and being pressured and, and benefit sanctions and um, you know, a lot of the measures that have been put in place for the poorest in our society uh, under austerity. Obviously under our system it's important to look to see who your MP is, who your candidates are and to see what, you know, what mental health is a political issue. It's not the most glamorous one, it's not often the one that they want to talk about. Everything at the moment is dominated around Brexit and immigration and stuff like that, as if mental health isn't a political issue of that kind of standing, but it is. I mean, there was an indication whether or not people like Jeremy Corbyn or not, that when he became leader of the Labour Party, he created a shadow minister for mental health. That at least was a signifier that the idea that you would have a political minister for mental health is that it's that level of issue. And so I think it's really important when we're talking about schools, mental health in schools, we're talking about um, mental health in prisons, um, that you look and see and ask of candidates what they're doing. You know, go along to things, ask them. Twitter, you can tweet them for information. You can ask about that. So I would recommend anyone doing that and to have a look and see what their stance is on, you know, it won't always have a, a label saying mental health, but what is their stance on the NHS and funding? What is their stance on immigration? What is their stance on LGBT rights? What's their stance on um, women's equality? Um, and sexual violence, for example. Those are some things that affect young people all the time and um, it's quite easy to, to see with MPs kind of what, what they've been doing or not.